Good evening, Boulder business leaders, and welcome to the 2020 Celebration of Leadership. To set the festive tone for this evening of celebration and community, we begin with a live performance by a very special guest. He was one of E-Town's Handmade Songs winners back in 2016. Our musical guest for this evening is Harper Coram Var. He is known for writing songs that capture the feel of the environment and his world around him as he paves his own path. He has recorded a full-length album and is currently working on a second release. Now, please welcome 2016 E-Town's Handmade Songs winner, Harper Coram Var. Howdy, folks. I'm going to kick us off with a song tonight. My name is Harper Coram Var. Well, went wrong in the world today and how would I know? What strange lives have been taken away? Oh, how would I know? Go with them, Delilah. Say sweet things to guide us, yeah, yeah, yeah. My feet pound on the porch like a drum How could they know? God, I hope they're the fortunate ones But how could I know? Oh, go to him Delilah, we make drinks To buy him, yeah, yeah, yeah All my mind is chemical Let's take time and get very close Four years back it was a heart attack on this buggering beach Not your love but the chemical that's punching me in the teeth Oh, I miss you, Delilah, the stillness, silence, yeah, yeah, yeah I know now, I'll never know I can't know the chemicals I like you, I like you I'm coming ready or not, I don't care where you are I know you I know you, like step or run in my brain, I don't care if it's sane. I love you, I love you more than I ever did then or will ever again. I'm a sucker for wild romance and I jump at the chance. Expectation for teenage love, I'm gonna call you my drug. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. I've been Harper Gorn Bar.
Thank you, Harper, for that beautiful rendition and for reminding us of how important the arts are to the Boulder community. Don't forget, Boulder Arts Week is March 27th through April 4th. It is Boulder's only large scale... Give it up. It is Boulder's only large-scale, inclusive celebration of our community's vibrant arts and cultural offerings, promoting and celebrating our city's thriving creativity. At this time, please welcome to the stage Boulder Chamber President and CEO, John Tayer. Okay, uh, so I'll just be totally honest. When I was thinking about trying to read the mood of the audience today, it was very, very difficult, okay? But then when I was out there, I thought, should I throw away my comments? I don't know. But let's let her rip and see where it goes, okay? So I'm just going to say, let's clear the air. I know things have been a bit upside down now maybe a little unnerving even, and if you pardon the expression, anxiety inducing. Emergency declarations, online classes at CU, toilet paper hoarding. <laughs> These are indeed unprecedented times. Nothing I can say standing here will change the course of a virus or the impact of the response on human health, our economy, your business. What I can say definitively is the very thing that brings us together tonight, leadership, is the very thing that will get us through this crazy period. Am I reading the audience? Okay. okay. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. It is said that the true test of leadership is how you function in a crisis. Cool heads, rational thought, creativity, and comfort to others. Those are among the qualities of leadership that we need during this period. I look around the room today, and I know those are the qualities or what we all have the capacity to exhibit. And given the circumstances, we all have the capacity to lead. And the qualities, those qualities, will be tested over the course of the next few weeks in caring for your businesses, your employees, for friends, and this community. Tonight, we have the fortuitous good fortune to honor those among us who have demonstrated the highest standards of leadership. They were selected through a very competitive nomination and review process by their business community peers because they are the very model of leaders we all seek to follow and emulate. Tonight we celebrate their qualities. We will take to heart their many contributions and we will admire their achievements. Even more relevant though for today, we will all recognize in their leadership the capacity for leadership in ourselves. All of us can keep cool, act rationally, devise creative solutions, and provide comfort to those others in the face of difficult challenges. So while we spend this evening joyously celebrating our honorees and their gifts as business and community leaders, recognize that we also celebrate all of you and your individual leadership strengths. So whether or not you think you have enough toilet paper <laughs> and hand sanitizer, let's raise our glasses or elbows to our collective capacity to overcome difficult challenges and to becoming an even stronger community through the storm.
All right, let's get the action started. And of course, I want to start the evening by recognizing those who help bring us together. Uh, they are the sponsors who recognize the importance of chamber events and our programs for bringing us together, whether it is uh, the most uh, exuberant times or in difficult times. They are the folks who invest in the Boulders Chamber and its mission of building community through business. So as I recognize these folks, I want you to process their names. These are the businesses that are investing in our community and in our business success. So, tonight's presenting sponsor, represented by a bunch of great folks, but Nathan Ewart, who is the Colorado new, relatively new, I should say, Colorado president, market president, Nathan Ewart, FNBO! <laughs> Then we have our gold sponsor, another great investor in our business community, Elevations Credit Union. And then we have our silver sponsors. Please hold your applause until I name them all. They're all special. A Spice of Life Catering and Events, Blue Federal Credit Union, The Farm, W.W. Reynolds Companies, the University of Colorado Boulder, and U.S. Bank. I also want to recognize some folks who are special to me because they are my liquor store. Um, there are beverage sponsors, Ann and Chris at Petty John's Liquor and Wine. Then we have our media sponsors, Biz West and the Daily Camera. And then our bronze sponsor, Capital One Cafe. So before I hand off the microphone, it would be uh, not appropriate if I did not recognize the folks who are stand behind me, my bosses, that is the Board of Directors for the Boulder Chamber. Will you please stand? These individuals work exceptionally hard to keep me in control, but to make sure that your business support, advocacy, and economic vitality organization is strong and headed in the right direction. And I not only thank them as my bosses, but as my friends and partners. So thank you so much for the Boulder Chamber board members. And now it's my great pleasure to bring up two great partners of mine at the Boulder Chamber, the executive director of our Boulder Economic Council, Cliff Harold and our Vice President, Karen Cruz. Thank you, John. Appreciate that introduction, and thank you for the warm welcome to the stage. The Boulder Chamber works hard to bring our community together through a shared voice, common goals, and the drive to move forward. This community is our foundation, and we need leaders like you to stand strong with us. We would like to recognize those companies that stand strong with the Boulder Chamber and are vital to the success of our programs, including membership, advocacy, and economic vitality. We would like to begin by acknowledging those companies at the Chautauqua level, which represents companies that are either elite partner members or Boulder Economic Council investors. I ask those of you representing companies listed on the screen to please stand and receive much deserved recognition. Thank you. And now to Karen. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. 
I am now going to recognize the top two standing strong levels and ask a representative from each company present to come up to the stage and gather for a group picture with our president and CEO, John Tayer. If you can hold your applause till everyone's up on the stage, that'd be great. So those companies that stand strong with the Boulder Chamber at the Sunitas level, which includes either president partner members or companies that are elite partner members, and they're also BEC investors. Altman Consulting, Ball Aerospace, Berg Hill Greenleaf and Rashidi, Biz West, BOK Financial, Boulder Community Health, Celestial Seasonings, Conscious Bay Company, Daily Camera, FNBO, Google Incorporated, IBM Corp, In Tandem HR, Mid First Bank, Pop Sockets, Premier Members Credit Union, Soma Logic, Twitter, <laughs> US Bank, and Warner Pacific Insurance Services. So we'll just give them all a second to get up here. So. All right, thanks to those amazing partners. Our Flagstaff level companies support our economic vitality, advocacy, and member services programming at the highest level as president partner members, BEC investors, or Strategy Council Boulder Together investors. A representative from the following companies, please come on the stage to get another picture with John. Um, Blue Federal Credit Union, Boulder Medical Center, Cordon Pharma Colorado, Elevations Credit Union, Plant Moran, Tebow Properties, Terrapin Care Station, W.W. Reynolds Companies, University of Colorado Boulder, Excel Energy, and Zayo Group. And I know from these companies we had a lot of last minute regrets, um, company policies and things like that. Uh, but let's, uh, let's, we got a few more coming up. All right, thanks to all these amazing partners. So just a big, huge thanks for all these businesses and community leaders for their additional contribution, and it's helping to make the Boulder Chamber a strong and vital organization. Thanks, everyone. At this time, we would like to welcome to the stage the presenting sponsor for tonight's event, FNBO. Representing FNBO is Nathan Ewert, Regional Leader for Colorado and Western Nebraska. <clears throat> well, good evening, and thank you for being here tonight to honor an impressive list of individuals and companies here in Boulder, Colorado. The Celebration of Leadership is an event that helps tell the Boulder story. A story of businesses across industries and community partners coming together to create a special place to work and to live for all of us. We're honored to be the top partner with the Boulder Chamber on this event. It truly is an event that highlights what makes Boulder's businesses special and the role businesses and individuals play in building such a strong community. You may have noticed that the bank has a new fresh logo. It's a simplified look, and I'm excited to share with you the introduction of our bank's new brand, which is 
F-N-B-O. It stands for who we are and who we've been for more than 160 years, which is the First National Bank of Omaha. In the coming months, the brand will eventually be used everywhere that you see First National Bank, on our buildings, on our ATMs, and all of our marketing material. Our brand has actually changed several times over the past century, so we see this as just the latest evolution. It provides us with one common and unique brand across all of our markets, including our digital space, yet remains true to our long-standing tradition of sixth-generation family ownership, our deep commitment to the communities we serve, and our strong local leadership, which we have a lot of them here tonight in this room. Rest assured, what will not change is our dedication to being the great, big, small bank. Big enough to meet all of your financial needs, yet small enough to know your name. You will continue to be served by the same great people that you've come to know and trust in Boulder, Colorado. Thank you for joining us tonight to celebrate all the leaders in this room. I appreciate it. And now the moment everyone has been waiting for, the award ceremony. To present the first award of the evening, please welcome to the stage Heidi Dormadai, Senior Director of Development at the Boulder JCC. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Wilner. I am thrilled to be presenting the first award tonight, the 2020 Celebration of Leadership Impact Award. This year, we are honoring a visionary leader who works tirelessly to meaningfully connect individuals and organizations to find common ground. And I'm not just saying that because he's been my boss for 10 years. His contributions have manifested themselves through the diverse programs he has built and this amazing campus and facility that were built under his guidance and with the generosity of hundreds of donors from Boulder County and beyond. His leadership has created a community jewel and a model for environmental stewardship and social sustainability. Jonathan Lev facilitates, inspires, and empowers people to participate, to engage, to explore, to learn, to connect, and to thrive. Jonathan breathes community, and he is, so, he is a powerful force in Boulder County, from actively hosting the Boulder Rotary Club's weekly meetings, to engaging with and encouraging countless nonprofits to utilize the Jays' remarkable spaces. Jonathan constantly looks for opportunities to foster and build community through partnerships with local government, religious and international organizations, businesses, and other nonprofits. He has been instrumental in bringing together community leaders to engage in discussions around critical issues facing our community. Over the past year and a half alone, the JCC has hosted the Anti-Defamation League, the Boulder Human Relations Commission, the Boulder District Attorney Michael Doherty, and Attorney General Phil Weiser, among other community leaders. This convening of community is only one part of a larger vision to create a culture throughout Boulder County built on the premise that respect and equity are paramount. As you can see, Jonathan's impact has been monumental, rippling through Boulder County and beyond. Tonight we recognize Jonathan as an example of how one individual can engage and inspire others to find common ground create opportunities for partnership, inspire environmental responsibility, and ignite passion to build a better community. I do want to thank the Chamber for recognizing Jonathan's incredible leadership. Jonathan, thank you so much for all you do for the community. Please welcome to the stage my friend and fearless leader, the current Executive Director of the Boulder JCC, Jonathan Lev.
thank you all. Um, it's sort of weird being in your own space where <clears throat> normally I get up here and I'm like, welcome everyone, it's so great to have you here. But tonight, um, to be able to actually um, receive an honor is really special. Um, and it's truly an honor to be able to stand up here and I'm really grateful to have been selected to receive this impact award from the Boulder Chamber of Commerce. Um, I want to congratulate and uh, recognize all of the other honorees tonight. It's a pretty incredible um, group of people, and to be part of that group is uh, really special. And I, as I look back to the previous award winners of this Impact Award, um, I'm really humbled to, to be part of a group that has had such a powerful presence in Boulder for so long and continues to make this a community we all want to live in. Thank you to John for being a friend um, and to the Boulder Chamber for all you do in this community to make our businesses thrive. Um, thank you to my friends who are here tonight. <laughs> my family members who are here and also on the live stream. Uh, uh, board members and colleagues who joined me to be able to celebrate. Um, you know, in some kind of irony, every time I sat down to write this over the last couple of weeks, some kind of crisis in our community ended up coming um, up. And it's not surprising that it feels like what always ends up happening um, in this community, that there's somebody in need, some, some important thing that we need to focus on to be able to make our community better. And, you know, the pressing issue of, of COVID-19 is definitely present, but there's so many other things that we have to continue to focus on. Community resiliency, poverty, natural disasters, climate change, bias and hate in our community, and so much more. And the presence of, our, of all of you in ways to be able to help fight all of these things and make this um, a very resilient community is so important. So thank you for continuing to do that. I feel so proud to be part of an organization that prioritizes these things. Um, and helps come together with creative ways and solutions to be able to solve them. And I believe today that in every day that we have an opportunity to find ways to support one another and build community, especially when we have to weather challenges. I know that in times of crisis and celebration, one of the most important things we can do is to be kind to one another and find ways to uplift. Ten years ago, when I moved back here for the third time, um, yes, I'm that person, um, I never could have imagined what the Boulder JCC would end up being, and I definitely didn't ever imagine what it could be um, and what it is today. Um, I'm so proud of the work that we do, the partnerships and collaborations we have with other community organizations like the Chamber. This building has really become a home and a hub for inspired conversation, learning, fundraising, and community building, both for our own um, organization and for so many others in this community. By accepting this honor tonight, I truly stand with the teams of people who have helped build this new campus, the staff and volunteers who continue to make it thrive, and our community and you who continues to participate in both our programs and support our mission. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for the honor. I appreciate it. And now, to present tonight's Rising Star Award, please welcome to the stage former city councilwoman, Jill Grano. It is my absolute pleasure to present tonight's Rising Star Award. <sighs> Something doesn't feel right, though. John, I'm sorry. Jerry and Nicole, hang on. Just give me a minute. You know what it is? We gotta do some breathing first. <laughs> oh, my baby. Everyone, we're gonna do some Ujjayi deep breaths here. Unless, of course, you feel a respiratory illness, in which case, 
please exit the building. <laughs> We're going to breathe in love, we're going to breathe in gratitude for Jerry and Nicole, <laughs> and we're going to do this now. <laughs> All right, so now it is my pleasure to present this year's Rising Star Award to two incredible people who own a business that plays an outsized role in our community. Tracking more than one million visitors by Boulder Rights to the studio over the last decade, Yoga Pod has expanded into five states with six studios alone and continues to demonstrate how companies can do well by doing good. Under the principled leadership of Jerry and Nicole Weinhold, we love you, Yoga Pod's mission is to create a vibrant community where everyone can transform their body, elevate their minds, and open their hearts. You see this body? It would be a lot better if I went to Yoga Pod more. <laughs> um, this is just a very quick list that compiles just a fraction of Yoga Pod's impact on our community during 2019 alone. 1,200. That's the number of car trips that Yogapod saved in 2019 by partnering with Community Cycles. Through this program, Yogapod provides free yoga mat rentals to anyone who chooses to bike, walk, or bus instead of taking their car. This partnership not only brought together two fantastic local organizations, but resulted in 1,200 fewer car trips, meaning less CO2 emissions, less traffic con congestion, and happier people. 650. Through Yogapod's Community Gives Back Scholarship Fund, Yogapod distributed more than 650 free yoga passes to three Boulder based nonprofit organizations, helping teenagers, young mothers, and women in crisis Attention Homes, Mother House, and Boulder Safe House. Made possible through the financial generosity of Yogapod students, the Community Gives Back Scholarship Fund demonstrated the healing power of yoga to those who can benefit from it the most. This pro under this program, yoga passes were freely distributed to at-risk clients of these organizations, as well as to their staff and their volunteers to help mitigate burnout and incentivize participation. Twelve. Yogapod organized more than a dozen classes in 2019 with 100% of the proceeds going to select charities from raising funds to help victims of California's wildfires to partnering with the Yoga Gives Back program and more. Through this program, Yogapod, in, including their dedicated teachers and students, helped raise more than $6,000 for local charities. Jerry and Nicole, we love you. Thank you for helping to create a more grounded, loving, and generous community. Now, everyone, please take one final in-breath and help me to welcome to the stage YogaPod's co-founders and owners, Jerry and Nicole Weinholt, to accept the Rising Star Award. Jill's, Jill's closer back here. That is sacred space. I think Jill should be the next um, host for the Academy Awards. What do you guys think? Yes. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. Thank you, Jill. We love you. Thank you. What a treat. And what a surprise. <laughs> this um, award um, kind of blew us away. Um, we've been in business here for a decade. It was a decade just a couple of weeks ago. So 10 years in business in Boulder. And um, it just really is humbling and, uh, and quite um, overwhelming to to be recognized this way, so thank you so much. Yeah, it is really amazing and humbling, and we have been um, you know, in this community for 10 years, as Jerry just mentioned, and it's been a wonderful journey. This community means the world to us. Um, we are guided by our, our passion for Yogapod through our five values. And our five values at Yogapod, we strive really hard to live by them every day. And we couldn't do this without the support and the love from our managing team and our teachers and our community and our students who roll out their mats every day 
to just find that solace. So we're really grateful. Our five values consist of very number one, we breathe first. And I think that's always important. And I think that's an important rule for all of us in life, right? Um, number two, we cultivate discipline. Number three, we create community. Number four, we do our best. And number five, we honor nature. Mm -hmm. And so we strive to do all of these things every single day in our business and in our lives. And I think our community kind of follows suit and that's what, um, that's what drives us. That's what's been driving us for 10 years. I'm so impressed that Nicole recited all five of those by memory. <laughs> yeah, there's no notes, that's amazing. Um, th those values do um, really govern our behavior and really guide us. Um, they are beliefs that we really hold in such high esteem that we hope that they noticeably affect the way we speak and the way we think and the way we act. Um, this leadership award, you know, we, in our estimation, leadership is, is all about influence. And the irony is that the students and the members of our, our amazing yoga studio are the greatest influence of our lives. Um, every day we feel, you know, inspired and motivated, motivated by them to, to the, be the best that we can be. And we're striving in every day with those five values, and they, they certainly um, have guided us on the path, and it's been absolutely wonderful. We do want to recognize that uh, two of our managers are here, Liz and Jan, who are amazing, and Brittany and Barb, two of our teachers, are here in the audience as well. Jill is an amazing student. Um, we also want to recognize that one of our pod stars for many, many years is also a RIPS, uh, uh, Leadership Award recipient tonight, and that is Sandy McCann, who's right up front, of course. Sandy, you're awesome. Phenomenal. So proud of you, Sandy. We were so delighted when we found that you also were being recognized. That, that is a real treat. Um, and I just would love to see a show of hands. Any of, any of you in the room that have practiced yoga at Yoga Pod, show of hands. Okay, that's Yay. not enough, but that's good. <laughs> that's good. And Matt, the MC back there. Matt, we love you, brother. Thank you. So we're very, very grateful to all of you, and, and uh, we're grateful to this amazing community. Thank you. We love Boulder. It is just phenomenal, and, um, and we look forward to many more decades ahead. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Giddy digging. To introduce our Startup of the Year Award, please welcome to the stage Finton Steele, Chief Communications and Culture Officer for Somalogic. I'll try not to read other people's notes up here, Trent. So, uh, I like having these available. Oh. It's the good stuff. So I, I'm really delighted to be here for, the, for this group. They, they've become really uh, special to us at Soma Logic. Uh, since opening their doors in late 2018, um, Rule 4 has already helped more than 50 organizations at this point protect the confidentiality, the integrity, uh, availability of their systems and data, which sounds incredibly boring, but is incredibly important. Um, Rule 4 is the first cybersecurity consultancy to become a certified B Corporation. Um, if you're not familiar with the B Corp, think of you know, Ben & Jerry's or something like that, which is uh, another amazing thing to put cybersecurity and B Corp in the same sentence. Um, through their also uh, bo pro bono efforts, their donations and sponsorships and event hosting, Rule 4 supports local, really mission-driven companies, organizations and clients, including the Colorado Avalanche Information Center, the Harvest of Hope Pantry, Humane Society of Boulder Valley, Community Food Share, Sister Carmen Community Center, Safe House, Safe House Progressive Alliance for Nonviolence, and the CU Boulder Infrastructure and Sustainability Office. Um, it's amazing. Their work's also like critical to businesses like, like my employer, Somalogic. 
Our efforts at SomaLogic are to, to change the, the whole world of healthcare in ways none of us could ever even imagine 30 years ago. Um, but it relies not just on our technology, but on the ability to help us secure and protect the sensitive personal data of hundreds of thousands of people, soon millions of people, um, and, and make sure that it works for them to keep them healthy and not others. Uh, help others, but not uh, at the expense of, of losing one's own. So through their work with us, actually, Rule 4 has become more than just a, a vendor. They, they've made stuff happen for us in the past year that has helped us leap ahead. So we consider them a full partner, partner not just in our data security, but actually a, a full partner in our mission of, of bringing about a healthy world. That's pretty exciting. We don't, can't say that about every vendor we work with. So I ask you to please welcome me, uh, please join me in welcoming Rule 4's co-founders, uh, Trent Hine and Dan Mackin, to accept the Chamber's Startup of the Year. Wow, thank you so much, Finan, and thanks, thank all of you for being here tonight. Um, uh, wow, I would have never guessed when we set out to uh, start a cybersecurity company focused on making uh, humankind a better world, um, that we'd be here tonight. And I was thinking about like, well, what are those, what are those reasons that led to that? And I, I came up with three. Um, so one of them is the amazing Boulder community. And, you know, Somalogic is a great example, right? When you think about Boulder, you're like, wow, we have pretty mountains and, you know, great biking trails, but this is the tech hotbed. It's not Silicon Valley, it's not Manhattan, it's right here in Boulder, right? The ground zero for proteomics is right here at Somalogic. Um, election security, I don't know if you know what the, the Boulder County Clerk and Recorder's office has been doing in the last few years to change the world of election security right here in Boulder. And it's fun to be part of that, right? And that's inspired all of us, I think, in the room tonight. Um, you know, two other things I, I wanna acknowledge, just amazing clients that we get to work with, the, the best people ever, and the team at Rule 4. Um, we have a whole cadre of people, I'm um, sitting in the middle of the room there, um, who make it all possible every day. And, yeah, you guys are awesome. And, you know, getting to work with people who are family makes a huge difference. And, and I, I appreciate everyone who makes that happen. Uh, yeah, it's going to be hard to uh, follow that one. But I will start by saying um, it's just an incredible honor. And we're absolutely um, blown away by the support of the Boulder community. Um, I can say confidently we would not be standing up here uh, without the amazing skulk of foxes that we have um, on the Rule 4 team. Um, some of which are here today. We got Aaron and Drew and Michael and Zach and Haley. Um, we got Paul and Randy, uh, I think, live streaming, hopefully, from home. Uh, and, um, you know, it's, it's uh, the, the most amazing, brilliant, uh, creative, fun, uh, hardworking group of people. And um, it's a little baffling in hindsight to think about how smart these folks are, and yet they were willing to uh, jump over and join the high-risk world of uh, startups. Um, you know, the last thing I want to say, I just echo uh, Trent's comments about this community. Um, it really um, is an amazing area that, that I, we are really passionate to see continue to thrive and be this innovation and entrepreneurship hub. And so one of the things we would like is to ask of you tonight um, to give a little of yourself to help perpetuate that, help us uh, mentor the next group of Boulder business leaders. Give, you know, a little bit of your time or a lot of your time, but lend an ear, um, you know, let somebody bounce ideas off of you, nudge someone in the right direction, be a friend, um, and like I say, let's grow that next generation of Boulder business leaders. Thank you. Thank you very much.
And now, to present tonight's Innovative Business of the Year, here is Corinne Waldo, Boulder Chamber Economic Development Director. Thank you. I'm actually pinch hitting tonight. Uh, Erin Jones, the Executive Director of Workforce Boulder County, was supposed to present this award, but she wasn't able to make it. So, hope you don't mind. Um, but I'm ve actually very honored to be presenting this award. I hold this company very near and dear, doing workforce development every single day because of some of the innovative practices they've done in an, a field that isn't often seen as innovative. In 2012, Sandy, along with her sister Maureen McCann, established Home Care of the Rockies, a provider of in-home caregivers to families living in Colorado's northern front range. But both Sandy and Maureen knew that in order to provide a sustainable in-home care model, they would, they would have to assure qualified caregivers who would model the company's values and be adequately trained and compensated to support older adults in the region. Many challenges developed along the way, in including supporting and developing compassionate caregivers dedicated to providing the ultimate honor, respect, and support to our older adult clients. Turnover among caregivers is high. Recruitment is very hard. The work is incredibly important, though, and seeing the need to change the model, the McCanns took the in-home care model further with Home Care of the Rockies, when they created a sustainable agency dedicated to delivering exceptional care to older adults while at the same time supporting the caregiver. They did this by creating the first Department of Labor certified apprenticeship program for caregivers in the nation, which offered advanced caregiver training opportunities, provided the highest pay in the region to qualified caregivers, and created a culture that values caregivers and supports their growth. The increasing, complexity of need, the increasing complexity of needs by older adult clients pointed the way to the development of the Home Care 100 Caregiver Training Program, providing 100 hours of classroom education and skills practice that includes concentrated hours in dementia and Alzheimer's training, which is not only innovative, but necessary for quality caregivers. The U.S. Department of Labor Office of Apprenticeship has granted Home Care of the Rockies a Certificate of Registration of Apprenticeship and is a USA registered program that has now gotten the notice of the governor and is now a model that other companies want to replicate. Please join me in welcoming Home Care of the Rockies founder and president Sandy McCann to the stage to accept the Innovative Business of the Year Award. Wow, I haven't heard it back like that. Uh, when you run a home care business, your nose is to the grindstone every day. Um, but it takes actually a lot for me to get out of the yoga studio on a Wednesday night. So <laughs> this is pretty amazing. And thanks to Jerry and Nicole and the amazing teachers and all the staff. Um, honestly, that's how I can keep it together. We're deeply honored and grateful to receive this recognition. And you might be wondering, um, although Corinne did such a great job, where the innovation, oh, where is the innovation in a home care company? In the summer of 2011, right after a 20 year career in financial services marketing, a career that had long lost its meaning for me, I learned that my job was being eliminated. With little more than a 90 day severance package, in the weeks that followed, I experienced a constant oscillating fan of this is the most incredibly freeing moment of my career and holy mother of goodness, how am I gonna pay the mortgage in September? But the most pressing question was, who am I if I'm not the vice president or the senior vice president of marketing? As a recovering type A, my new full-time job that summer was to find my next career contribution, a job where for the first time I could make a meaningful difference in people's lives. I have learned that the universe always conspires to help us move forward if we're living on purpose. And within six months, Home Care of the Rockies was born. 
With my largest investment account as seed capital, I asked my sister, Maureen, to join me in a business neither one of us knew anything about. But as two resourceful women raised in the Midwest, we rolled up our sleeves, studied everything we needed to know, and in April of 2012, had our first home care client. Nearly eight years later, my life has been transformed for the better and by the challenges and heart-opening wonders of running a home care business. One of the most unexpected challenges we faced early on was building a caregiver workforce to deliver the high-quality care that Maureen and I expected. For the first four years, we delivered that high quality, but at such a high stress level to the office team. You know that phrase, be like a duck, on the surface make it look easy, but underneath paddle like hell? That was us. Faced with high caregiver turnover, increasingly complex care needs of our older adults, and the basic math problem of an older adult population growing six times faster than the population as a whole, we needed something fundamentally different to attract, hire, and sustain a caregiver, a sustainable workforce. So in mid-2016, we drew up plans for the Home Care 100, a professional caregiver training program. An on-the-job training platform that would provide live classroom training, income increases based on accumulated learning, and a way that caregivers could demonstrate proficiency in learned skills. Thanks to my amazing team, and especially to Sarah Russell, our nurse educator turned Home Care of the Rockies Chief Operating Officer, today more than 50% of our caregivers are Home Care 100 graduates earning higher wages than most caregivers in our industry. Caregivers who complete the program, <laughs> caregivers who complete the program stay. And as Corinne mentioned, there's about 82% turnover in the industry. And they gain the professional skills to provide exceptional care for our older adults. Additionally, we are recipients of the Colorado FIRST grant and we are a registered apprenticeship with the U.S. Department of Labor. We are continually working to improve jobs for the direct care workforce, as workforce shortages remain a constant challenge. We are committed to helping all caregivers have access to better training and better pay through the Home Care 100 so that we can deliver the best care for older adults in Boulder County and our community. Thank you, Boulder Chamber, for recognizing us. Again, we are deeply honored and grateful to receive this award. At this time, please welcome to the stage Kara Mertz, Sustainability Manager for the City of Boulder, who will present the Franny Reich Lifetime Achievement Award. Losing everyone else's notes up here. <clears throat> Thank you so much to the Boulder Chamber. And it is such a great honor to be asked to present this award to Bryce Isaacson. I've had the pleasure of working with Bryce as a partner and with Western Disposal in his time there, and it does seem like a lifetime. <laughs> Almost all of your 30 years at Western, we've worked together. <clears throat> and in Bryce's time there, Western Disposal has become the largest and most well-loved trash hauler in Boulder County. <laughs> As some of you know, my focus is on waste avoidance, so it might seem odd that I'm up here introducing Bryce, but he's been there every step of the way, making sure that Western could operationalize all the crazy rules that the city puts in place for them. <laughs> Pay as you throw pricing back in 2000, I think it was, uh, special taxes that forced Bryce to figure out one kind of commercial customer versus another kind of commercial customer and how to um, build them differently. Um, buying trash and recycling carts, probably close to 100,000 of them back in the early 2000s. Then buying and fabricating and patenting and cleaning and fixing all the bear-resistant carts that are now required in parts of Boulder. 
uh, creating a special six-day review for um, looking through trash bins on the hill and in the university um, areas during move in and move out. And every single step of the way, Bryce's attitude has been, let's figure out how to do this. Um, it's really been a pleasure. Um, He's supported not only all of those rules, but Mike's crazy idea to start a composting site here in Boulder. Um, and Bryce also volunteers his time to serve on the Boulder County Resource Conservation Advisory Board, the Recycle Colorado Board. He's, I think, been vice president for three years. Um, he's co-chair and on the executive committee of the Colorado Com Composting Council. Uh, he's chair of the National Independent, or he was chair of the National Independent Haulers Association, and he's served on Boulder Chamber's Boulder Together initiative, uh, which really does underscore not only Bryce's commitment, but Western Disposal's commitment to leadership in housing, transportation, and workforce development. Uh, it's really amazing when you look at the low turnover rate of all of Western's employees and um, particularly their trash haulers, which is a really, really difficult job. And a big part of that is because of Bryce's commitment as a leader within their organization. I've so valued your can-do attitude, Bryce, um, for these three decades with Western. And you do it while maintaining a stylish, quiet, <laughs> Uh, humility about you. So you get stuff done, but you don't make a big deal about it. And I personally will miss you greatly. And the rest of Boulder's, the Boulder community might not know it, but they will too. Thank you so much. And please welcome Bryce for a Lifetime Achievement Award. great honor to receive this award this evening. Um, it's really kind of icing on the cake for me because I'm at the end of my work career. I'm retiring in two and a half weeks, so yes. it's, uh, <laughs> it's not really the end of a long road. It's, it's just, it's been a wonderful experience. And I want to thank the chamber and everybody on the selection committee for choosing me to receive this award. It's uh, very appreciated. Um, I want to give a very special thank you to Dan and Linda Sauters, the owners of Western Disposal. I don't know where they are. For, <clears throat> I'm a little bit different than most people that have been up here because I'm an employee of a company versus having my own company. But I've, they afforded me the rare opportunity to be able to spend three quarters of my working life at one company, 31 years. So that's... <clears throat> It, it doesn't happen that much in this day and age anymore where you spend that much time with a company. And believe it or not, at 31 years, there are numerous employees at of Western that have been there longer than I have. As Kara said, it's just a, it's a great company to work for. It's been a great ride, a lot of fun. And uh, the, the company has become my second family after all these years. The uh, Western has been in business now for 50 years, and one of the things we've prided ourselves on all these years is being a good community partner. And as Kara kind of explained, it's been, we've, we've, uh, uh, we've worked with our customers and local governments to, to uh, meet their challenges and attain their goals. And uh, when a company's values are aligned with those of the community, like we are with the city of Boulder, Working together is just a natural course of doing business. It's just what we've done all these years. And when both sides ask the question, you know, what's possible and how do we make that happen? That's been a lot of those discussions we've had over the years. It it's brings to the, you know, when we come to the table with that collaborative attitude, then a lot of things can happen. You just naturally work together. And uh, so over the years, we've, we've helped design and develop many programs, as, as Kara said. It's you know, trying to increase recycling and composting, building the first EPA-permitted composting facility in Boulder County, which then brought composting to residences and businesses. The, uh, when we first um, started talking to the city about locking down with bear carts, 
one of the real issues was the bear carts weren't really widely used except in mountain areas. So there weren't any carts built to use with an automated garbage truck. So instead of going back to the old way of doing it with somebody on the back of the truck, we designed and patented you know, the, the first uh, fully automated truck or cart in all three sizes so we could secure the trash and compost from the bears. So all of these things were, you know, momentous programs for the city and for us. And we, you know, I feel fortunate that I got to participate in, in, in all of these programs. So, um, you know, one of the, you know, the, you know, one of the other, the latest things we've done, I just signed a contract with the city of Boulder to, that will uh, fuel half of our collection fleet with, with uh, renewable natural gas that's generated at the city's uh, wastewater treatment plant. So we're currently on CNG, we'll be on RNG for half of our fleet. And uh, during my career journey, I've had the privilege to work with a lot of hardworking, intelligent people, both in the uh, private sector and the public sector, and Kara being one of them. I was going to give her a shout out. I didn't know she was introducing me, so it was quite a privilege. But uh, it's always been a team effort and in the efforts of a village, so to speak, because everything that we've done, whether it's more environmental focus, whether it's more legislative commitment or, or rolling out more environmental programs, it's always been helping design, talking about it, and how to make it happen. And we've tried to be there at every stage of the game. We're the, the biggest hauler in the city, and uh, so almost it's, you know every kind of program that's designed, we've been sitting at the table to say, we can make that happen. And uh, I share this award with many people in this room because the successes, the accomplishments, and the passion of everybody in the room is really part of why I'm standing on this stage today. I've been an employee of a company, and so I've helped to make things happen, I've helped to make things move, but so have a lot of other people in this room. So I thank everybody here for the award that I'm getting today, and uh, thank you for the chamber again. Okay, before we do our last, uh, recognize our last honoree, we have a special recognition that up until about three hours ago was a complete surprise. Whoops. <laughs> but the long story short, we get the opportunity through the special president's recognition to honor a great partner of the Boulder Chamber, a great friend of mine, and a great community leader. And so in order to appropriately recognize her, I'm going to bring up to the stage two other great partners, friends of ours, and great community leaders, our Mayor Pro Tem, Bob Yates, and our City Manager, Jane Brodigan. Marianne was going to go to the open space board meeting and learn about prairie dogs tonight. <laughs> now, you're not going to, as John mentioned, you're not going to find this next award in your program. This is not the Virginia Patterson Award. Uh, Kevin Daly, you're going to have to wait for a few minutes. Uh, this was meant to be a surprise to the award winner who happens to be among us in the room this evening. The Chamber's President's Award of Distinction is an honor that is bestowed only rarely. This year, the award committee agreed that this was the year to do a special award for this very special person in light of her leadership in our community as an ambassador of Boulder, her commitment to the continuing vitality of our community, and one of our state's leaders in tourism. Last November, she received the Governor's Award for Outstanding Individual Contributions to Colorado Tourism, recognizing her, this is the quote from the award, tireless contribution to advancing the Colorado tourism industry. And tonight, 
is our turn to recognize her outstanding leadership and many contributions to the local community. Now, the prior award winners have been allowed to sit in their seats as we've read off um, the accolades, but Marianne, you're gonna have to come on up. Please welcome to the stage, the Chief Executive Officer of the Boulder Convention Visitor Bureau, our very own Marianne Mahoney. Now you have to be up here and listen to all of this and embarrass you, I hope. Nope. <laughs> 19 years ago, the Boulder Convention and Visitors Bureau made the prescient decision to appoint Mary Ann Mahoney as its Chief Executive Officer. She has served with distinction since then, championing Boulder as a destination for everyone, from foodies to hikers and bikers to culture seekers. Among her many accomplishments, Mary Ann advocated for the Valmont Bike Park, a free 42-acre natural surface cycling park for diverse riding styles and abilities. And she helped to create the Boulder County Farm Trail, which highlights 850 plus farms in Boulder County that feed our restaurants and our residents. To give, <laughs> and yet, and wait, there's more. To give US 36 drivers and bicyclists access to the amazing views of the Boulder Valley, Mary Ann spearheaded the effort with CDOT to create a pull-off with bike tools and porta-potties on top of Davidson Mesa overlooking our town. She had the foresight to know that the US 36 bikeway would become a significant amenity and gateway to Boulder. Most recently, Mary Ann worked with the city to support the free hiker buses to Colorado's busiest trailheads. The Park to Park shuttle takes people from downtown parking lots and neighborhood roads to the Flatirons at Chautauqua Park. These shuttles have become the gold standard for working collaboratively to find a solution on how to accommodate a growing number of people, both visitors and residents, at the most popular recreation site in our city. And, no city presentation would be complete without thanking Mary Ann for her support and advocacy of Boulder tourism. Leading the way in promoting the natural environment, arts, culture, innovation, quality of life, and visitor experience that helps generate significant dollars from, revenue, from retail accommodations and food services taxes. Each year, visitors spend approximately $500 million in Boulder contributing more than $20 million in taxes to the city's general fund. This spending helps Boulder retain its local quality of life, contributing to the way we pay for police, fire, transportation, open space, parks and recreation, arts, culture, library, and other city services. Marianne reminds us that tourism isn't just nice to have, it's a necessity. Mary Ann is a valued partner and a dear friend, and I'm thrilled to be part of introducing this award. Oh wait, there's more. <laughs> While tourism is important to our local economy, contributing ne nearly $20 in economic impact for every dollar spent by tourists, Marianne also understands that it is just as important to make Boulder a better place for those of us fortunate enough to live here. Under Marianne's leadership, the Convention and Visitors Bureau has been a leader in the city's Leave No Trace program, reducing visitor impact on natural lands. And each year, Marianne and her team award more than $100,000 in grants to local organizations that provide cultural experiences for Boulder residents. Recent grant recipients include the Jaipur Literature Festival, the Museum of Boulder, the Latino Festival, the Boulder Ballet, and Open Studios. But in addition to all of the great things that Jane and I have just mentioned, and believe me, there is much, much more, it's important to recognize that Marianne is just a very nice person. <laughs> I think that the best test of a kind and thoughtful leader is the loyalty displayed by her team. I've had the honor of serving on the Convention Visitors Bureau Board of Directors over the last four years, and I have seen firsthand how much Marianne's team respects her, 
honors her, and loves her. She returns that affection by mentoring each member of her team, treating them as peers and giving them opportunities to grow, even if that's outside of the organization. It is one of the highest functioning teams I've ever witnessed. It is all due to Marianne's compassionate and dedicated leadership. Marianne is often the first to come up with a practical solution to a seemingly intractable problem. Marianne never forgets a face or a name. Marianne remembers everything you tell her. <laughs> so, sometimes that's a problem. <laughs> Marianne compliments freely. Marianne is generous to a fault. Marianne is modest, giving credit for success to everyone but herself. And of course, Marianne's affection is contagious. She greets you with a big hug, she listens intently, she puts you at ease, and she laughs frequently with joy and delight. For all of these reasons and so many more, Jane and I are honored to present on behalf of the Boulder Chamber the 2020 President's Award of Distinction to Marianne Mahoney. The final award to be presented tonight is of special significance to us here at the Boulder Chamber. In 2013, the Business Leader of the Year Award was renamed in honor of Virginia Patterson, a trailblazer of the ages, a champion for business and shining light within the Boulder community. Please welcome to the stage Bob Morehouse, founder of Vermilion, to present this year's Virginia Patterson v Business Leader of the Year. Good evening, everyone. Great to see you. Before I uh, introduce our Business Leader of the Year, uh, I'd like to just do a quick survey by a show of hands, how many of you have gone to the Mountain Sun on Pearl Street? How many of you remember the tie-dye uh, hangings, the chalk drawings, the SOB uh, burgers, the Illusion Dweller IPAs? And I'm curious if any of you found um, at the end of your meal you didn't have any cash and, and, um, and you found out they don't take credit cards. And so you were given a karma envelope to, and promised to pay. The reason I ask these questions is if you've been to the Mountain Sun, you know that it's an unforgettable place. Um, there's a smile on the servers, there's incredibly delicious, healthy food, and there's an innovative experience awaiting. And this is no accident. It, uh, it's a reflection of the personality, the openness, the absolute passion and creativity of its founder, our business leader of the year award winner, Kevin Daly. Now, Kevin will be the first to admit it's not all about him, and it is his team that he's created, and he's right about that. But what's unique is how his particular character, his particular leadership that engenders a kind of open-hearted hospitality, his uh, leadership engenders this hospitality that makes you relax 
and feel right at home. If you've ever been in the restaurant when Kevin's present, it seems like everybody in the restaurant knows Kevin, and that's part of the beautiful experience you have when you're in one of his restaurants. Kevin has merged progressive, affordable food with Grateful Dead spirit <laughs> and wacky promotions and earthy, unpretentious vibes to resonate with Boulder. Yes, he's a big supporter of nonprofits. There's probably not a nonprofit in Boulder that hasn't been a beneficiary of his generosity. He's always raising funds for vital causes. And he's created an excellent working condition for his employees with in, in innovative incentives, generous activities and parties and free tickets to practically every concert that comes to town. But what he's really given all of us is a place that we could call home. I can imagine Virginia Patterson sitting in a booth at the Mountain Sun saying, Kevin, come over here. This place really makes me happy. <laughs> Kevin's a model business leader in our community. It's fitting that tonight we celebrate his unique brand of creativity and passion. Please welcome to the stage my friend and an incredibly generous part of our community, Kevin Daly, this year's Virginia Patterson Business Leader of the Year. Wow, um, that's kind of hard to follow up. I should have Bob write all my speeches. Um, Bob helped me with my speech. Dave Ensign helped me a little bit. But thanks to Bob and John and Molly and Dave and everybody who worked on this. I really appreciate it. Um, I want to share this honor with everyone at the Mountain Sun. Um, I, I, truly, I truly think that we're all more than, this is more than me, it's everybody over there. Um, I'm just kind of like the guide, I guess. Um, <laughs> Running a business in Boulder for 26 years has provided me with a constant reminder that life is not just about hard work and making money. It's also about enjoying life, having fun, and celebrating good food, drink, music, and community. This is what we try to do at the Mountain Sun every day. Um, Ian and I started out selling burritos, weed, and beer at Grateful Dead parking lots. I can say that now because it's legal. <laughs> but... Um, we did that just so we could go to the next show. We actually sold more burritos and beer than weed, but we sold a little weed. Um, who knew at the time that this entrepreneurial spirit would lead us to owning brew pubs in one of the best cities in America? And this is really an incredible city. I really want to believe that the hippie spirit that's helping bring, that brought me here to Boulder is still leading us in some way. Um, we're fortunate in Boulder County to enjoy a business environment that is both vibrant, rewarding, and passionate about social justice. Every day I'm proud to interact with people like you guys and other business leaders in Boulder who are great role models in creating opportunities for local residents by assuring the best possible working conditions and employee benefits. Boulder is really a leader in that and I appreciate that. I'm humbled by the power that we have as businesses to impact communities through the, the, our community through the implementation of the most equitable, inclusive, and generous employment policies that our business plans can support. This is what creates a vibrant community, a better life for us, our families, and those that come after us. As some of you know, I was passionate in supporting the Living Wage Initiative. It wasn't popular, it wasn't very popular, even with some very many progressive business owners that I knew. But I've always said that if you can't pay your employees a living wage, maybe you're not that good a business person. Um, <laughs> so I was really impressed. I was really impressed 
that uh, the chamber also took this position. And Dave Ensign told me to tell a joke, so I'm gonna try to tell a joke really quick. Um, we were just, Brendan and I were just in Sydney for Gay Pride and we went to a drag show. And it needs a little background for you straight people. But at drag shows, the drag queens get paid a little bit by the bars, but then you also hand out, everybody gets a lot of ones and they, as they do their number, you give them dollar bills. In Australia, where we just were for their Gay Pride, their smallest dollar bill, their smallest currency is a $5 bill. So their coins are, so you don't really want to be tipping $5 bills. So I leaned down to a table of bears and I said, how do you guys, how do you guys tip your drag queens? And he said, we pay our drag queens a living wage. <laughs> so, I'm, <laughs> um, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Um, uh, where was I? So um, anyway, I hope you agree with me that the benefit we contribute, that all the benefit when we, that we all benefit when we contribute to the well-being of everyone in our community. The idea of business as a force of good strongly resonates with me. Societies that raise everyone up, societies that lift all boats do better. So I firmly believe in that. The value of generosity and how we conduct business is something that I would like all of us to consider every day. We as Boulder business owners are privileged to be, are the most, some of the most privileged people in the world. And I'd like us all to make the most of our incredibly good fortune and ensure, to ensure that everyone could come along for the ride. Thank you very much. Okay, we're in the home stretch, and I'm going to ask you all to uh, follow Jill's command. Take a deep breath. Brace yourself for this final round of applause, okay? Just get yourself, shake your hands out, because we have a lot of folks to recognize and thank for tonight's event. So first of all, I just have to say right off the bat, just we heard from each of the award winners and I just am so proud to represent, on behalf of the Boulder Chamber, such a diverse, vibrant, strong, intelligent, and, and caring business community represented by the leaders who won tonight. So please, all of you stand and be recognized for one final round of applause. Thank you. Okay, I have, um, again, don't wear yourself out because we have a few more here. So, I'm gonna run down the list, just keep that applause going. So first, we wanna recognize for the opening act, the beautiful music of Harper Corm Van. In the back, from WK Real Estate, the voice in the booth, Matt Jensen. I swear we did not just give Jonathan an award because we were having our event here. We gave it because he's a great leader, but this is a great facility. Thank you to the JCC and the staff team. We also had great food, and great food comes from a great company, Spice of Life Catering, 25 years of business in Boulder, 25 years of partnership with the Boulder Chamber. I thank David Rubin and Dan for their leadership and the staff at Spice of Life for their great service tonight. And then finally, I just have to give it a shout out. I have the, as I said, the privilege of working on behalf of this business community, but I don't do it alone. I do it with an amazing group of individuals and leaders in our community. They work so hard for our business community, for the community at large. So give it up for our Boulder Chamber staff team for their amazing work tonight. And
And then finally, we had some amazing support for this event. And, you know, I'll tell you, this was a challenge as we came down to, to the uh, discussion about, gee, do we hold an event like this? And our sponsor said, yes, let's, we got to bring people together during difficult times, and they stood with us. So we have a, all the sponsors listed on the program. Please recognize them. But in particular, I want to re make sure to re recognize our presenting sponsor. And Nathan, if you can please stand up and be recognized, FNBO! And then our gold sponsor, another great investor in our community, Elevations Credit Union. Okay, that's all the clapping. Let me just say a couple things. So my last thank you is to all of you. So we know that this was an a, a event on the cusp of some major announcements about gatherings and bringing people together. But also, we know that for many of you, you recognize that coming together in gatherings like this is the strength of our community. We build off of each other. We get energy from each other. So listen, we know that some people had to make the personal decision, the business decision not to be with us. I'm sure that many of them are watching us on live stream, so hey there. But I want to recognize all of you for your commitment, for your work on behalf of our community, and for being part of just a wonderful Boulder Chamber family. So thank you all for being with us tonight. It means so much to, to myself, our staff team, and it builds the support for our business community for the long haul. Thank you all. All right, so that's, that's the wrap, but let me just ask you two things. We got food and drink outside, eat up, and then second, we have our new Boulder Chamber Business Directory. Grab it. You're going to want a couple of copies to give to your family. They are beautiful. Please grab one on the way out. Thank you all for being here tonight. <laughs>